Hey, what's up, everybody, man? So even though 2020 was not the best year for anybody, if you was a Browns fan, it was definitely one of the best years of your life because not only did you see the Browns be good, but we also made the playoffs. And not only did we make the playoffs, we actually won a game against the Steelers out of all teams. So, you know, even though we did go to the next round and lose to the Chiefs, which we probably should have won that game with Patrick Mahomes getting put out the game with the concussion, you know, we got to make the right moves moving forward so that we can not only get back in the playoffs, but be good enough to compete with the Chiefs next time around because the Chiefs, they're going to be good for at least a few more years. So, when you're looking at the cap space that we got to spend in free agency, which is coming up starting Monday as far as the negotiation, we have $26.8 million in cap space as of today that we can use to strengthen our team. Now, if you're somebody that follows the Browns, I feel like we should be on the same page as far as the position needs that we need to address this offseason. And I feel like the needs that we have is at linebacker, corner, DN, strong safety, and kicker. The reason why I make kicker a real priority is because not only is Cody Park your free agent, but we've been needing a kicker for years now. And we're at the point where we're actually good. You know, we're actually playoff contenders, and we actually have an offense that's good enough to make us Super Bowl contenders if we finish rounding the rest of our team outright. So, kicker definitely is important for us because if you're trying to be serious, you need a kicker that's going to be able to bail you out in those situations where you move the ball pretty well, but you only get to the other team's 40-yard line or 45-yard line or even just a 35-yard line, you know, to where you're in a situation where you're kicking a 45 or 50-yard field goal. We need to be able to confidently put our kicker on the field and him to actually make those kicks. Cody Parkey, we didn't even know if he was going to make a field goal or not. Cody Parkey honestly exceeded expectations, but, you know, at this point, we need a kicker that's ready to go and ready to give us his all and make all the field goals that we need. So we need to make sure whoever we pick out a bunch is right. Now, to get into the actual position that people care about, we're going to start with the linebacker position. So um, when it comes to the linebacker position, we need to go out there and get somebody that's proven and ready to lead. So I want top of the line that's on the market so I can know what we're getting. So the first person I want us to actually target, I only want one of these guys. Because we don't have, remember, we got to disperse this money right. So I want us to pick up Jayon Brown. He's a linebacker from the Titans. You probably don't know who he is. I didn't know who he was either until I just looked him up today. But he is good in coverage, which is a plus because we need linebackers that are good in coverage. Last year, we were bad at that, you know. Jayon Brown can man up with these tight ends, some of the slot receivers, and run step for step for them and actually have a real impact on them catching the ball or not, that is great to have in a linebacker. He's also good against stopping the run and playing against the run. So that's another plus, you know, like you get a linebacker that can do both. That's the best of both worlds. And the plus that comes with Jayon Brown, he knows how to strip the ball and he can pick off the ball too, man. So Jayon Brown is pretty much an all around young linebacker i forgot to mention that he's young he's like 25 years old all around young linebacker that's ready to step up to some team and make a name for himself man now i would love to see him on on the browns because you know he he looking pretty good on the highlights you know he he looking good man if we don't get Jayon brown i would not mind us pursuing nick morrow if the raiders don't resign him because the raiders they love him out there you know he's a part of their important and good linebacker corpse they would hate to lose him but nick morrow he trying to get paid, you know. He listening to the offers from him. He, 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 you know, they've been negotiating a little bit. But Nick Merle trying to get paid a little bit, you know. And he's very similar to Jayon Brown. He's also young, I believe. And he's faster and he hits harder than Jayon Brown, you know. So he would definitely be a good addition. He's good at reading plays, shedding tackles. He's a good underrated linebacker both of these dudes are underrated let's just be, be be real they both are underrated you probably don't know who both of these dudes are i didn't know who nick morrow was either until today you know but these would be two good pickups the market value for both of these dudes is between 10 and 11 million dollars that don't mean they're going to take that they might take more they might take less depending on how desperate teams get 
but that's the market value. So we miss out on both of those. And if we're in a situation where we need to, you know, pay a little bit less than 10 to $11 million, we can scoop down, which I would not prefer us to do because I want top of the line, but we can get Avery Williamson. Avery Williamson is not top of the line linebacker, but he's definitely good enough to come to your team and be productive. You know, he's good at stopping the run. He's a good tackler. He's a veteran and he can be a leader. Remember, we need somebody that's ready to lead on this team. I don't need no Malcolm Smith type leader that's a booth player. I need a player that's good and can lead, you know? So that would be something um, Avery Williams could do. And he's worth only like seven, eight million dollars. Probably you can get him for less than that. Who knows? So next, we would have to address the cornerback position. The reason why the cornerback position is so important this offseason, because like I said, if you've been watching the Browns, you know how bad we were last year. Greedy Williams did not play at all last year because he had nerve damage. That really hurt us because we had Terrence Mitchell out there. And I don't know if it's the defensive coordinator. I really question the defensive coordinator, but Terrence Mitchell was not looking good. Terrence Mitchell only had one good year here in Cleveland. So I don't know if it's Terrence Mitchell too, but you know, Terrence Mitchell was bad, you know? Um, he wasn't the worst at all, but he was bad. Then we had dudes like Kevin Johnson, who we thought we could revive career. You know, he 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 came off injury and was just not living up to any of the expectation we had on him. You know, long story short, the corners that we were relying on outside of Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams were boof, you know? So we not only need to bring in somebody that can fill in the depth, but we need to bring in somebody that's good enough to step up and ball in case of injury because both of our top corners, which is Denzel Ward and Greedy Williams, are injury pro. And we don't even know how good Greedy Williams is. So if Greedy Williams ends up being trash or not that good, we can slide him to the slot, which he might be able to excel at, and then bring in one of these corners to play the outside or maybe draft somebody. So the approach I want to take for corners is to not spend a lot of money at all because the top corners on the market is dudes like Shaquille, Shaquille Griffin, um, Patrick Patterson, Richard Sherman. You know, those are the top corners of this free agency. And that's not the type of corners I'm trying to spend money on. You know, they're asking for like $11 million and up. I'm not doing that, especially for Patrick Peterson and Richard Sherman. They washed, you know, they, they, they a little bit washed. You know, they still got some in the tank, but they old, man. So I'm not making that move. So the way I would approach this, of course, draft somebody in the draft because we got seven picks. Then, now as far as this free agency, the first corner that we pick up, make sure he's somebody that you can pay a little bit of money for, no more than $6 million. Somebody like a William Jackson tier, a Bashar Breeland tier, maybe a Woozie because I heard he's pretty decent. You know, somebody like that. Then the other corners, you bring in somebody that's cheap, worth a million dollars or $2 million a year. One of those corners, somebody that you could take a risk on and get a high reward on, like a Gorion Conley, you know? We're not, we're not messing with the Vernon Hargraves. They, they've proven to be trash, but Gorion Conley might be all right, you know? So that's the approach I would take for corner so we don't spend a lot of money. So we should be able to walk out of the cornerback position spending no more than $10 million in total for about two or three corners. And then at DN. We need to make sure that we get somebody that will compliment Miles Garrett because right now we have nobody, you know. Oliver Vernon's a free agent, plus he's coming off of Achilles injury. We're not about to bring him back. We just cut Claiborne, as you've seen earlier in the video. The only corner we got to compliment Miles Garrett is Port Augustine, and that is not what we're about to do, you know. So I don't want to spend a lot of money here, but I know that the Browns are willing to spend a lot of money at this position. So if we end up going cheaper at linebacker, and spend the most money on DN, I would aim for somebody like a um a um a Yannick, um Naguan, whatever he say his last name, Yannick that played for the Ravens and the Jaguars. I'd bring him in. I'm bringing somebody like Hassan Reddick, um a Melvin, a Melvin um Ingram, um, you know, somebody of that tier. Um, maybe even Von Miller, but Von Miller's a little bit old. I don't even think we go bring him in. But as far as the Bud Dupree's and the Shaq Lawson's, cut it. It's not happening. Maybe Bud Dupree, but I'm Bud Dupree's coming off an ACL injury. I don't even think he's going to be ready to start week one. We need players that's going to be ready for week one. I'm not signing Bud Dupree. 
Shaq Law, I mean, Shaq, his name is Shaq Barrett, I mean. Shaq Barrett is, is good, you know? But he costs too much money, man. It's just flat out. So we not getting them. If you think we go get them, you tripping. So the realistic market I got, in the original way I would do it, is spend about $8 million on somebody like Carl Lawson. If you got to pay 13 like Pro Football Focus is, go ahead and spend the 13 because Carl Lawson is pretty good. He reminds me of Oliver Vernon, but younger and uh, more durable. You also could get Jadavian Clowney for the cheap, but Jadavian Clowney comes with injuries, you know? Jadavian Clowney, his market is about $7 million a year, $6 million, you know? Or you can invest in a bust, Solomon Thomas. You can pick him up for depth and then draft somebody, you know? But the thing about drafting DNs and D-Lamin in general, they take a little bit of time to develop most of the time. So we need somebody that's going to make an impact right now. Pick somebody like Carl Lawson, maybe a Carl Carlos Dunlap. And if you're going to spend money instead, you can get the dudes like Yannick and those other dudes, man. But that's the approach I want to take a free agency. Now, as far as our own free agents, I don't want to bring any of these dudes back besides Rashard Higgins. Rashard Higgins proved that he's the player that we knew he was, you know. I don't know what Freddie Kitchens was thinking. I don't know what the GM um, was thinking at the time. I forgot his name already. But... You know, Rashard Higgins is here to stay, and he wants to be here. So all we got to do is throw him a little meal or two, and he cool, you know? Um, you know, the, the, the dudes I definitely don't want to bring back. Kendall Lamb, I don't want to bring him back. He's booth, you know? He's trash. Straight up trash, you know? He ain't do nothing outside of scoring that touchdown off that trick play. Sandejo, we ain't got to talk about him, you know? Malcolm Smith, I, I, he, he maybe come back for us in depth. Give him like a meal. You know, Ogun Joby, we're not going to be able to afford him. So he's not going to be able to come back. Just looking at these names here while I'm actually making the video. I already told y'all Oliver Vernon not coming back. Kevin Johnson, if he if he willing to take a million dollars, maybe. But anything more than that, he can go. BJ Goodson was solid for depth. Give him a meal. You know, but all the other dudes that I didn't name. Oh, Cardell Hodge may be able to come back for some depth too at receiver. Give him a little 900 k Give him that. Give him the deal we gave Rashard Higgins last year, that 900 k And we'll be all right, man. So, yeah, that, everybody else can go. Everybody else can go flat out, man. But that's the approach I want to take here, man, as far as free agency. Let me know who y'all would like the Browns to have, how much money you want to spend on what position. And don't forget, man, if we don't get nobody here, we still got the draft. So that's why I want to disperse the money correctly. But let me know what y'all think. Drop some realistic options in the comment section based off cap, sa salary cap and all that. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I got some more content coming soon.